Welcome back to the Australian Technology Park. My name is Ben Saman Green, and we are live with the Logitech CGPL Season 2 Championships. Now, Avant Garde has won their last seven CGPL games in a row, only dropping their very first game of this season up against their now opponents, the Chiefs. Now, we're about to find out who's going to walk away $2,700 richer and the victors of the CGPL Season 2 Championships. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Cyber Game of Premier League Grand Final. Thank you very much for that introduction, Sam. And you are dead right. This is the CGPL Season 2 Championship Grand Final. Avant-Garde, the Chiefs Esports Club, going head-to-head -head after their respective wins early on mm -hmm. today. I think Avant-Garde maybe uh, got through a little bit more comfortably, perhaps, than Chiefs. Yeah. They really had to fight for it, especially in that Though, last game. Having said that, I think they probably were against the easy opposition. Yeah. Uh, I think so. I think you're right, yes. I would agree with you there. Nonetheless, we are into picks and bands in game one of this best of three series. If you just joined us, my name is Mitch Uber Leslie. On my left here, as far as you're concerned, is Jordan Elfish Guy at Mays. We've got some massive games to come. So yeah, already absolutely. picks and bands coming away. Avant Guard have banned Zillion, Zed, and Janna away from the Chiefs. And the Chiefs have taken away Kazix, Lee Sin, and Rise. Corky immediately the hover for Avant Guard. We saw Veritas playing that earlier today, doing pretty well for himself as well. So uh, I guess Avant as well, not particularly keen to go up against Swiffer's Zillion, which we saw against Immunity. Yeah, not fun to deal with. I saw mm. a tweet actually from Claire. Apparently he uh, he eat a minion as Jace yeah. instead of Swiffer when he had about 50 HP. Unfortunately, he didn't get the kill there as well Rip. because oh, well. of that. That's okay. Nonetheless, uh, ooh, the Thresh for Rosie now being picked up for the, I believe it's the first time today. Yeah, first time today, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, last time I saw it was Nada, so he's taking... He A wants it, B he wants to take it away from Nada there, so good pick there. Oh, how Nada will respond? Will it be in Morgana? Will it be the Nami we keep talking about? Yeah. We've never actually got to see him play any other champion. Yeah, I mean, I've been waiting to see him play Nami because, you know, he's the kind of champion that. <laughs> I mean, he's the kind of player that always plays Nami, and there we go. It is locked in. So it's going to be Corky and Nami in the bot lane. Pretty strong duo mm. there from AV. And of course, the hover now for top lane is. Maokai, and in fact, locked in as well. So some pretty big picks coming out for Avant-Garde already. Yeah, it's not going to be a rise for Porky. Obviously, they've been banned away. Swiper won't have that champion either. Yep. And Spooks does want the Elise in this case. Uh, I think the last time we, we saw him play that just recently, actually, just now. I think uh, Spooks on the Elise. Mm. Uh, yes, we did. Pretty well with that one. So I think That was actually against the Maokai top as well. Swiffer opting to go for the Rumble. Mm, and Korea. Radia pulling out the Twitch. It's time for some Korean barbecue. And yeah, obviously, Spooks... Um, uh, we saw just constant dives towards Kensty, actually. In the, oh, no, sorry, it wasn't Kensty. It was Porky in the top lane. On that Maokai, really, really shut him down. We saw sort of uh, J.K. Smithy actually just sort of being far yeah. too far out in the open yeah. and just sort of getting cut down now. So the Rumble's the first time we've seen that one today. Today, yeah. We expected to see it a little bit more than what we have. Mm. Yeah, I mean, like, it's it's a common pickup against um, against Maokai because of the Radius pick as well, the Twitch. Finally, it's come out. Yeah. I was waiting to see it. I was saying, oh, we're going to see it on Twitch. You know, like, we, we finally have. And uh, I guess, you know, maybe because the Thresh has been picked up for Rosie here, adding the extra bit of safety for Twitch. But Radio has been practicing that one as well. And the AoE damage combining, obviously, uh, rat tat tat with the Equalizer. Yeah, of a lot absolutely of crazy. It's really, really And if AoE. you get locked up in Equalizer as well, it really makes it easy for Radio to get lots of bolts onto everyone on your team because you can't spread apart easily. Yeah. So uh, the answer to that for Avant-Garde is going to be a Yasuo kind of oriented comp. A lot of knockups here. Everyone except Corky, of course, has a way to proc that ultimate for Yasuo. Yeah, not even that. It's also a Jarvan, the fourth in the jungle here. Yeah, first one today, seen, actually. Yeah. We're, we're, we're seeing that maybe make a little bit of a comeback. It's always been popular in yeah. Europe. Always, always been popular. We know that uh, you know his ability to be aggressive early is something that Yozora is going to value as that kind of jungler. Especially if he's trying to counteract the uh, the movements of Spooks with well, Lee Sin I mean, not available. Which yeah, is Lee Sin and Karzik banned away from him and at least picked out. Who else are you going to take, really? Mm, absolutely. Well, you are still limited. We could try for Fiddlesticks again, but I think Spooks is a bit happier on the uh, on the Spider Queen in this situation. Yeah. Now, it's also going to be a Fizz picked up for Swiffy here. And Fizz is you know, commonly seen against those sort of AD Assassins or sort of 
Uh, you, you know, so 80 hyper carries in mid lane. Scaling is very, very yep. strong. Fizz is strong at kind of all points in the game as well. Um, and it's a good way for, you know, a minute for Chiefs to sort of ensure that Swiffer is, is strong at all points and there's no real the dip for him. So it might even indicate to us that Spooks might be wanting to look elsewhere here as well. A lot of games. AP damage coming out for the Chiefs though. If um, Radia doesn't have a fantastic lane phase, I mean, I know we spoke about today, he doesn't very often lose his lane, but if he does have a bit of difficulty, there's not going to be a lot of attack damage, mm. sort of damage coming out from the Chiefs. So we said, like, uh, magic resist itemization isn't is as not simple as, yeah. a story as armor these days. It does it? make it difficult to tower dive. Yeah. That's right. So I have to see. And exactly right. You, if, you, if you're stacking sort of MR and you're trying to deal with towers and, and other things like that as well, it's a little bit harder. But even that, it's, it's, it's harder to itemize for in general, in general yeah. just because of the item choices that are available. Yes. Uh, you know, something like Azonia's as well is going to be preferable over like a... a Abyssal Scepter, for yeah. example, to throw one out there. Nonetheless, we are locked away here as well. Corsair, uh, Avant, sorry, Avant Garda. I've name. done that once today as well. Right, doesn't matter. But obviously, Nada on that Nami. It's going to be Corky Nami going up against the Twitch and Thresh in the bot lane. We said Twitch, not a super strong no. laner. It's not really his strong point of the game. So, how does Rosie carry the, uh, the sneak rat through? Well, I mean, it's difficult. If you do get behind a Nami, it's very hard to kind of get a decent engage because if you do get bubbled. And if you don't manage to pop Nami or the AD carry, which in this case is Corky, uh, they're both just going to get sustained up with ebb and flow. Um, so it's you really need to get at least a kill onto this Twitch here. Otherwise, maybe, of course, there is always the option for a lane swap. But uh, it might be difficult for Swiper in that situation. Well, yeah, I don't really think you want to be in that position as, no. as Rumble. With that being said, that being said, Twitch would definitely benefit from that, as you said. You know, of, uh, yeah. Safety in the early stages of the game. We will have to see. Again, Kensti is going to be up on that. Yes, well, it worked for him early on today against Envy. He really, really put some, uh, put some work on towards him with that champion there. Even though uh, there were some points that maybe he was getting a little bit ahead of himself. We saw that a couple times. We tried to get a bit cheeky with some split push action. But mm. um, Fizz is the correct response to a champion like uh, the Asway and, and to an extent Zed as well. So I'm um, looking forward to seeing Swiffer on that one. We actually expect to see that from Claire. Yeah, um, well, it was know, banned away. Yeah, that's right. Into like a Zed pick, yeah. uh, which is kind of how it went, actually. I think Zed was picked up following the ban of, of Fizz there. Yeah, that's correct. So I have to see how Swiffer can be playing that one. The roam potential is very, very strong for both of these mid laners as well. You really expect these guys to be all over the map making plays happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, neither and especially of these when you have a Twitch. Yep. You know, you want to be getting that Twitch out onto... Once he's picked up a couple of items, the Yomu's <laughs> probably looking for some uh, sneaky kills around the place. And neither Yasuo nor Twitch really benefits greatly from hanging around and farming up in the mid lane. They really want to go and help snowball some other lanes, which is going to be a boon, of course, to Spooks and Yozora, who already will be quite mobile around the map. Now, Avant-Garde, Chiefs were the only team to beat them. Yeah, in the in normal season. season. But even more recently as well, um, these guys haven't played each other much. Uh, yeah. well, well, which is, uh, on the competitive scene, yeah. they're in different groups for the round of eight. So they've probably been screaming against each other as well, but on the stage, this is the first time, obviously, uh, in a little while they've gone yeah. head to well, head. Well, I mean, this is AV's first real land together as well because yeah. they're going to be at Armageddon, which is next week or something like that. Yep. So, yeah, Chiefs, of course, very, very experienced at land. Probably got their nerves under control. AV, maybe an exception to that? We'll have to see. Avant-Garde have had plenty of online time to play together. They have played. Like, this this team in this configuration has been together for in the entirety of this season of CGPL. Yeah. So it's, this is nothing new to them playing together, uh, as far as I understand, obviously. Uh, especially for a lot of these guys. Veritas and Nada, so much synergy as well. And Kensti slots in really nicely. So these guys, this is nothing new for them. But on the live stage, it can be a bit different. But they really were just dominant this morning, considering yeah, absolutely. we often get those jitters from teams early on when they're sort of getting used to the land stage stuff. No, not for these guys. Yeah. Maybe uh, the practice yesterday at the Net Cafe for them has uh, paid off. I'm not really sure. But they definitely made the most of their time when they got yeah. here to Sydney. And they've, uh, yeah, wasted See, no time in getting ready. I oh, know. These computers are pretty fast. I don't know why. Pretty nice. Uh, not, shout out to MSI on that one. Some good gear. Uh, nonetheless, now pings all over the map again. The question remains: Will it be? Will it be that aggressive uh, sort of early plays? We know Chiefs. Chiefs get a good read on level ones. They knew uh, against immunity to sit right back in their bush. They knew when they could sort of come forward. They tried for something with the field of six. It didn't really work out here. So yeah, we haven't seen a real level one engage uh, so far. But this could be shaving up to be it. Nardov definitely has wow. not leveled anything yet, but he can get that bubble out if he's 
feeling like he can hit it. That was so aggressive. Yeah, Great way to put a team on the back foot as well is just be super aggressive. Chiefs, though, are not the kind of guys that are going to be uh, distracted by a, sort of like a, a, a display of brute strength like this. Avant-garde have got to be this careful be not to overextend. Yeah, we'll get, oh, wow. Rosie acting as a human ward. No, uh, Rosie is definitely actually is very, very oh, oh they, my this god, they're really busy. nice. There is, I have no idea. No, they're going to be completely trapped here. Swift are coming forward as well. Kinsey goes towards Rosie as well, trying to get some damage. So this is a very messy level one indeed. Kinsey now back towards the back line. Spook's going down towards about half health. Kinsey, the lowest of the low, still able to get away. Sapling being thrown towards Chiefs there. And amongst that, a bit of a dosy do, a bit of skip back and forth. Avant Garda managed to get themselves back on. Well, still on the wrong side of the map, if I'm honest here. They're going to go the long way around, try and get to safety. Led by Yozora, they're going to throw down the Damasian standard for the extra vision. And they will get out, but only just. I'll tell you what, that is very, very lucky. The Chiefs using the aggression of Avant Garde against them, out-positioning them. Yeah, really. Very, very nearly picked up the first around block. behind them. That was quite a nice move from them. Unfortunately, nothing came from it for their perspective. It's going to force Nada to be a little bit late to lane, though, if he even does decide to recall. If they're, They might be going for a lane swap here. But uh, Nada, of course, not going to be at full health or mana. So that's going to hurt him a little bit. And I think uh, Chief's kind of anticipating this lane swap. Well, Rosie yeah, they, up there in the top lane as they well. They did leave Radier up there. So Rosie will probably uh, make his way on over there eventually. And Nada is going to assist Gozora with his blue buff takeaway. Both junglers starting up on that side of the map. So maybe we'll try and impact the solo laners at that level three. We'll wait and see. Rosie keeping Nada well and truly out of the lane, forcing Veritas to stay with Radia. Probably not a terrible situation for Veritas. Rosie just trying to show off a bit of strength, perhaps. And Swiffer now had to trade with Kensty at length here. And we'll probably be able to keep up with him for the most part when Yasuo has a little bit of angst in the early stages. Laning is not fantastic, but... Yeah, especially considering those nerfs that came out to him recently. Yeah, like you said. I HP mean, nerfs. And a uh, base move speed, I think, as well. So, uh, just, just the little things, I guess, that have changed the the profile of, the, of his laning. We'll have to see if the Swift is going to make light of that one there. Rosie going to take a lot of damage. Veritas knows how to hit his Phosphorus Bombs, at least. <laughs> it's going to make Rosie pay for coming up too far. So the bot lane, rather. The top lane, don't know what we're going to call it now, but the solo lanes, sitting pretty evenly down there. Walkie getting that little CS advantage, but Swiper, of course, has that rest of that wave to clear. Radio, I thought, just then going invisible, but actually, no, he was just in the bush. Right, Kensta being forced away by Swiffer here, even with the shield, he's just trying to respond on towards Swiffer as much as he can. Swiper, if he wants rides with that, he's just trying to push the lane down a little bit there with the flames. Fitter. Nada coming forward like he does, it's level two. Rosie's hit level two in the bush, they don't know yet. But oh, wow, well, the bubble's going to miss, that's not good at all, Nada finds that he has the back right on away. It's going to be a distance towards Nada. Rady comes forward now. The exhaust has timed out. The heal comes out as well for the Chiefs bot lane duo. Veritas is still super healthy, but he's going to get flayed back. Rosie doing so much work right now. Really keeping the avant-garde laners on their toes. Oh, oh. the flash was good. Swift so going to chase for Kensty here. Can he just connect? One more Q. There it is. First blood. Swift in the mid lane. He'll actually survive. He won't take too much damage from the tower. That was a very clever flash for him to dodge the knockup. Yeah, well, Kensty didn't use any of his summoner spells there. So you think he might have had a little bit of room or to kind of flash out of that one or something, but it just maybe escaped his mind or something. I don't know why he didn't anticipate the you know, the Q coming away from Swiffer at all. Yeah. I mean, surely, like, you think you're going to get Urchin Strike Urchin at strike. some point. Yeah. Don't know. Maybe he thought it was on cooldown or something like that, but a, a lapse in judgment cost there has cost him his life. Uh, at least, I guess, he has got his summoner spells still up can escape another gank or something if it will happen in the future. But, I mean, that's not really something that you want to be taking away from a death. No. Righto. Swiper continuing to come forward here as well. Now, actually back in the lead. Tough champion to farm with, actually, Rumble. So, doing quite well to, uh, to keep Porky back there. And in the spot lane as well, Veritas and Arda just trying to get a feel for exactly how much they can get away with in terms of their aggression in this bot lane. Can they afford you know, to really try and push on towards Radio and land an Aqua Prison? Or is Rosie going to gatekeep them away and put them at a disadvantage. That is the sort of real question here. Of course, in this bottom lane, or the solo lane, should I say. It's going to be a lot of back and forth here. Swiper actually getting a lot of damage on that. He was in the danger zone when he used a flame spitter, so plenty of extra damage for him. Yeah, not really expecting to see too many crazy fireworks coming out of that bot lane because neither of these guys really have much kill potential, potential on the other, especially without the Ignite, which has kind of become the meta in the top lane or bottom lane in this case. So, I mean, once they hit level 6, maybe we'll see Swiper looking for some uh, dragon control, seeing as he is down there. That's very... Every time Nada misses a bubble, it's going to get jumped on Spooks. Will he take the Lantern? No, he doesn't have to. The Death Sentence hits towards Nada. The Cocoon hits as well. And that is the kill for Rady now. But Yozora jumping in. He wants Rady. He should be able to pick him up fairly easy, but can Veritas stay out of trouble? Or will Yozora get jumped on here as well? He is prone to being uh, eaten or hit, shall I say, by a Cocoon, but he managed to get away. So a good one for one there and a good 
intervention by Yozora to pick that kill back up in favour of Avant Garde. Yeah, so a one for one there in the top lane. And uh, going over to Radia and Yozora. Okay, bot lane liar, the flash beam burnt. You said not much kill potential there, but Swiper, even though he is level five, managing to completely por force Porky out of lane. This is what happens. Porky's had a fairly cruisy time today in terms of his lane and just been confident yep. and enjoying the top lane, but a Swiper uh, is not going to give you an e easy time of it. You well, can Swiper Por recognized that Porky was out of mana and that really meant Porky wasn't going to be able to trade back. And uh, that's why he went aggressive there. Yeah, smart call indeed. Being said, Porky a little bit healthier at this stage and Swiper does have the crystalline flash to keep him going. Whereas it's only a door and shield really being picked up for Swiper at the moment. So be a little bit careful. You know, Mr. Holland, he's on the ball. I expect too much mistake from him. All right, Swiffer picking up that Sheen there in the mid lane. That's going to be a pretty big power spike for him, and he's gone aggressive. Ulti is available. Oh, that proc hurt, but you can see the towel hit towards Swiffer as well. Kensti, if you get a knock up in a final breath here. Oh, the flash forward, but having the bot lane as well. The equalizer going on towards Porky. Veritas is going to be caught in it as well. He does going to get a cocoon. Nada tried to do something about it, but Swiper's going to get picked up by the auto. Surely Veritas now face to face with Spooks. Porky in the back line. He's trying to use his sapling there, but it's not going to be enough damage. And Spooks will come towards Nada. And after all that, Kensti actually dropped in the mid lane. Yeah. I know uh, everyone wants to probably see that fight as well, but client will go where it goes. And so a big That's fight in bot. Now Spook's going to try and get away from Yozora here. Yozora has the Golden Age. It's a bit of a slow up here. Can knock up, but it's a good repel away from Spook's. And he should just be able to walk away from this one. Yeah, that's not a good situation at all when your mid laner dies twice in a 1v1 situation. Uh, so Kensti really needs to kind of turn this around. Try and roam or something. Get away from Swiffer, who's uh, just not letting him get anything out of that mid lane. Okay, so after that one, I mean, uh, Swiffer confident in the 1v1. Kensti... Really pushing him, really Kensti coming forward aggressively. must have missed that knock up because his ultimate isn't on yeah. cooldown. Yeah, that's right. So that is kind of an important thing. I, I guess Swiffer probably playful tricks to it. Yeah, I think Kensti flash. I think he flashed forward for something there, um, maybe to guarantee that he hit the knock up. Maybe he was trying to do a sort of direct knock up off his uh, Q dash. Yeah, just to guarantee it. But either well, way, unfortunately, didn't work out for him. And this is transitioning into an early dragon for all the Chiefs. There is a pink ward down there. Of course, no wards around that place for AV, so they don't really know this happening. Maybe they have a little bit of an inkling, but absolutely no contest at all from AV, and this game slowly, but surely, going into the advantage of Chiefs. This isn't going to be anything like Chiefs versus Immunity, because Avant Garde are too aggressive to let things bottle up and build up to a point where it just explodes. It's going to be like this the whole time, and the problem with that is that Avant Garde are going to find themselves falling further and further behind if they continue to fight like that. They continue to be beaten in the 1v1s. The immunity didn't give Chiefs the opportunity to do this. They gave them a lot more respect, a lot more space, and then took the advantages as they came. You know, like really tried to pick advantageous fight situations, yeah. yeah, positions. This time, uh, Avant Garde just want to fight all the time. And Chiefs can do both. Chiefs can be passive and wait it out, or they can sort of be aggressive. You can see Swiffer very confident me mechanically, able to deal with Kensti, and I really thought that he had him there. Yeah, me too. I actually thought the wind wall would save him from Swiffer's ulti and he might be able to outplay him because he had Flash and Ignite up, but apparently was not the case. And Chief, uh, Chief Swiffer doing a nice job in this mid lane. Got a pretty good advantage for himself oh here. This is a good time to try and fight as well. Kensi's going to get wrecked by Swiffer there. 1v1. That's the way he likes to do it there. He just sort of waited until Kensi sort of been dashing around a little bit and then decided it was time to chum the waters. And that's a 3-0 fizz in the mid lane. And way to make sure that you're strong all game. Is uh, getting three kills off your opponent mid lane in the end. That is really just a result of. There haven't been a lot of ganks mid at all, really. Like, I don't yeah. think I've seen Yozora really come mid for anything no, big. Well, no, actually, we haven't. Oh. And you so leave Swiffer to his own devices and well, we'll see the results. Something needs to change here for Kensti because if this continues, this game is just going to snowball completely away from AV. As we speak, we see Swiffer heading up into that top lane with Spooks behind him and swipe out there as right well. Porky's hanging around for far too long. Equalizer comes down. Porky manages to dodge most of the damage, but here comes the jump, and he gets completely dived on. Maokai getting completely barbecued there as well. They'll probably yeah. Yeah. Well, what can you do as a top tower. laner in that situation? It was probably too late for him to back out anyway. There was no wards for him either, so he had no idea that was coming. Yeah, something about how long Swipe uh, stayed around, though, has got to give you an inkling that something fishy Spidey might be sense. Up. Yeah, well, surely. I think especially for a, for a, a player as, as proficient as Porky as well, maybe he just knew there was nothing he could do. I'm not sure, but nonetheless, that's another pick for immunity, and they're going to really force down this tower for that. Yeah, the gold lead spiraling out of control now. Oh, just over 2k gold lead in advantage now. For Chiefs, 
Jang will be up in a bit as well. That has been down for a little while. And Chief's going to be looking for that one as well. They're probably looking for a pick down here somewhere. But we do see the Avant mid laner and jungler heading down to the bot lane here. There are no wards. Kensti can now no longer lane normally against, no, absolutely not. against Swiffen. He just can't do it. So he's got to really try and roam. And that's the thing, like, Swiffen wants to keep him in mid lane. Like, there's not much that can be done. There's still a tower to be pushed down there as well. Whereas on the other hand, Swiffen can really go as he pleases. He's looking good in farm. There's a four kills. It's Aurea Lich Bane at 10 minutes, 11 minutes, man. That is seriously, it's crazy. seriously early. His assassination potential is going to be horrendous. Yeah, he definitely would not want to be on the wrong end of the stick in that respect. A lot of magic is just probably going to be required now for AV, but as we spoke about, it's a bit difficult to itemize against that magic damage. Yeah, absolutely. Especially when you've got a, we've got a Twitch who's had a fairly comfortable laning phase as well yep. and will be transitioning to a beast later on. Porky going to get jumped on by Swiffy here. This is what you can do if you're a fed fish. You can go wherever you like. Swiffy now jumping on towards that Porky. Reasonable trade back. Azora is coming up to that top lane. And in the meantime, Veritas going low. Well, Radia actually managed bubble. to dodge the bubble there. Nada missing bubbles. It's costing him so dearly. He used the tidal wave just to put Radia back. And Veritas, there's no safety from Rosie and Spooks. He is going to be able to avoid getting slowed up. But Nada is now the one to get slowed up. It was a flay backwards. It was going to be a flash and a Q. Oh, they're going to do completely demolish both laners here. Well played by Rosie to land that hook there, actually. Very well timed flay. It was a flash forward and a uh, Q from Spooks as well to finish that off. Yeah, and another free tower going to be going over into the favour of Chiefs. That's going to be two for one now. Obviously, uh, uh, <laughs> Avant-Garde, rather, have picked up that one in the mid lane. Yeah, well, well played uh, so far to the Chiefs there. And, and this is what I mean. Avant-Garde have one gear. Yeah, and, and that's that that always is like, that go. Is go. <laughs> Unfortunately, I think it's responding to a situation where they just inherently don't have an advantage. They can't be aggressive. They can't come forward. And they just sort of think twice about the moves well, they make. They're doing it again. Invading red jungle Why? when you're Why? this far behind is not a good idea. Just look at the amount of damage Swift can do. Look, he just goes where he pleases. He's still got playful tricks up his sleeve as well. And now, Avant Guard is sort of just like, well, we're just, oh, God, the equalizer comes down. They're sort of sitting there like, I don't know what we're even doing. Oh, Zora going to try and nice. use the Cataclysm playful there to lock him up. But kind of just locks to the Kensti and Porking in now. Swift will uh, actually won't be able to get away. He will drop down Swiper now. Left to try and deal the damage. He should be able to pick up Kensti here. No, the flash over the wall is good. Oh, oh good flash for Swiper. That's a fairly standard one to pick in one up. Radi coming in now as well. He should even need this to will be going over to him. Yeah, he shouldn't need to ulti this one either. He'll just pick that one up there with the Contaminate. But now, bottom out of turret being taken away by Avant-Garde. I don't think that's worth it though for Avant-Garde because you can see Chiefs here just sort of lining up here in the mid lane, looking forward to pushing that mid turret down. And AV, I mean, responding with the turret in the bot lane, but is it necessarily worth it? Probably not. At what point does it seem appropriate for Yozora and Kensi to have been there, to have been in that red side jungle when they're already And there's no vision either for them in that area. So I don't know what they were particularly doing in there. The, you know, the approach that they took against NV cannot be taken here. They cannot play like this and expect to you know, even break even at this stage. They really need to think of something different. Their approach has got to change. Be a little bit more careful about how they pick these fights. Try and fight them on their terms. Get some vision. Uh, you know, maybe sit back in your own jungle a bit. Try and build up some gold because they should know by now that they're behind. Well, it might even be too late for that at this stage. I mean, 11 kills to three on the side of Chiefs. And when Chiefs gets a lead like this, they don't let it go so easily. Obviously, Immunity gave them a run for their money in the last game, but in the end, it was all Chiefs. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, look, it's 11 kills to three, but the gold lead isn't too significant for this. But it's not big. yet. No. It's not that big, though. Dragon is up, though, so this is the time for AV to really try and turn this around. Well, they've got to hang around. They've got to fight this one, and they've just got to pick the targets correctly here as well. I mean, we know Swiffin needs to be eliminated. A playful Trix is going to give him a little bit of freedom in those fights, yeah. but he needs to go down first. And the Chiefs are going to pull that dragon right on out. Avant Garda positioned here quite close by. We can see that uh, oh, our Veritas has actually been zoned out completely. Porky going to get caught. Equalizer coming down as well. Yuzora forced to get out. Tidal Wave going to hit down onto what Swiper and Spooks. There we go. We see Kensti come on him, but he gets hooked immediately after coming down. He hits the ground, and then he hits the deck straight on after Porky now trying to get away. The uh, Lantern bringing Swiper forward. He's just going to throw his flamethrower around. A four for one fight and a dragon pick up here surely to follow the Chiefs. At what point at Avant Garde do you think, okay, well, maybe we should change things up here a bit? Yeah, I mean, Swiffer was essentially in the deep on his own, picked up two kills before he went down. And sure, you got Swiffer down, but after that point, it's really too late when you've spent that much effort getting rid of him. Uh, the rest of Chiefs is just going to walk through there. And now, everyone else who is dealing damage on Chiefs is a threat now too. Swiper's got two kills, Spooks has got three, and Radius got three as well. So these guys all getting a share of the kills, and this is a very dangerous situation for AV. And he here's the problem as well. Jarvan isn't all in 
champion. He has yeah. all in engaging. He he can't just sort of go in and back out. He has to go in. He has to use Cataclysm. He has to try and shut down the play. He's got a beeline for a certain player and he can't pull out. What Otherwise happens then dies. when he does that and then uh, Swiper just drops an equalizer on his head? Yeah. And all the people that were going to follow up on the Jarvan initiation start to think twice oh, about here that. Here goes Kensti. Go. Kensti over the wall there. Chandler Waters is going to hit him nice so job. hard and we're going to see Super. Continue to come towards him. Kensti <laughs> trying to get some stacks up. Surely there is not many options for oh, him at this stage. He's got a knock up, but Rosie will uh, just throw a lantern just for moral support, if anything else. And now... One of the free assist, I'm sure. Avangarda in no position to even sort of walk through their own jungle. They've got to be very careful now. They've got to be warding it up as much as possible. They've got a lot of wards up sort of towards the river and actually deep inside, uh, deeper towards Chiefs' jungle, but none inside their own. Yeah, well, I don't think they really need One any in their own at the moment. Well, uh, Avant Chiefs do. rather. Avant, Avant do. do. But Chiefs don't really need anything in their jungle. They're pretty happy to be taking all of the jungle from Avant Garde at the moment, choking them slowly to death here. And that turret going down now as well. 3-2 to two in the favour of Chiefs. Chiefs obviously sitting pretty in this game. Makes you wonder, do Avant Garde know how to defend? Are they comfortable? <laughs> no, but are they, honestly, like, are they comfortable? Like defending, they are such an aggressive team. It's so good when things are sort of working their way. And yeah. Like, I don't know if you can ever go into a game like against Chiefs and expect that to be the case. Look at that Porky getting forced straight away. Yeah. Taking so there. Much Chiefs damage. have really hit their stride today. I tell you what, looking very, very good now yep. after those last few games. And they're really not giving an inch. It's an eight to Swiffer, by the way. Oh, Swiffer's coming in. Uh, Chan the waters this lands on Porky. porky. Uh, he is fried. He is charmed. Oh, Swiffer. Is he going to go down? He yes, will. he is. That should not have happened. No, but, I mean, it's still got the result that they needed. They needed to get Maokai out of that lane so that Swiper can push that in his, uh, that turret down, rather. Yes, well, one for one, nonetheless. And now we can see most of Chiefs again pushing towards the bottom. They really want these objectives here. You can see Radius, Spooks, and Rosie. have has sort of been a trio for quite a large amount of this game, actually. Uh, returning after picking up that tower a couple minutes ago. They want to take the inner one now. Where do Avant Garde pick a fight here, Jordan? I mean, they've got one, they've got two wards in their own jungle. Well, we know they need to gain some vision. What, what, what are the steps here for them to sort of bring it back? I and mean, they're starting to fall behind by quite a significant amount. They do need to get some pretty critical picks, but I don't see it happening against a team like Chiefs. You know, you need to be able to pick someone off on their own. And even if they go for a 3v5, they're going to lose a lot of people against Spooks, Radia, and Rosie here. You, can, you know, if, if Radia is getting decent peel from Rosie, he's going to be dealing so much damage. And I don't think AV really have a way into this game unless Chiefs are making massive mistakes, which they definitely not want to do. Okay. A lot of vision uh, was previously claimed by Chiefs in the jungle. Ward's starting to expire now, so they would probably be a little bit comfortable with the way they move forward. Their land are being thrown into the brush just to give it a bit of extra vision. And Chiefs confident, but not too much. I think they're just making sure they have the information that they need first. We've got to be clearing some more. It would be a good then. time to fight now, though. Kensti in the bot lane. Yeah, exactly. And he's not in a position to sort of get back up there. But Chiefs can win this 5v5 quite yeah, happily. Absolutely. Think about the items that are starting to come out as well. It's a Blade of the Ruin King for Ray Deer, of course, and a Brutalizer to follow up. So we know he's going to go for his go moves very, very soon. It's almost as on his hourglass for Swiper as well, if he wants to go that way first. Already got a plenty of magic his pen. Zonius, yeah. which is kind of a critical item. You could see in the last team fight, if he had have had Zonyas, he would have survived after getting those two kills, and then it would have even been worse for AV. So things are not looking any more pretty going into the mid game here for AV than it was in the early game. And Dragon, as we see, going to be up in two minutes. Um, AV going to try and, I guess, get something from that, but you would expect Chief's going to have a lot of vision control around that area. Well, that's the point. Uh, they, they're trying to be complete about the way they're moving around the map here. They want to ensure that they've kind of got all of their bases covered. I think that's, that's really going to be the big plan. Talisman of Ascension picked up for Rosie here as well. Yeah. Just to ensure that if Chiefs want to fight, they, they will be able fight. to. Yeah. So they, I don't even know if he actually picked up a Relic Shield in that lane or not. No, no, no. He started with Ancient Coin. There you go. So, so he was pretty confident going into that lane. You know, if you pick an Ancient Coin, it's typically a weaker start than uh, the likes of Doran's Shield or Ruby Crystal on Thresh. More ward clearing being done here. So if we're always wanting to fight Kensty, and jump away from the knock-up there as well. Oh, that is a mistake wow. from Kensty. Kensty coming forward for God knows what reason, and he will just drop very, very quickly. Now Swiffer able to sort of back away. They go towards Veritas, perhaps. Oh, yes, Veritas getting a chunk down. The Equalizer coming right down on top of the tower. Swiffer using his honest to great effect there. Nice work. He jumps straight in. 
Oh god, the urchin strike doing some serious work there. He's gonna get bubbled up. Will he be able to get away? Swiffer on just a sliver of health, wow. trying to walk away. And I think he can. Yazora's gonna want to chase. Gets a little bit of a speed up from Nardo. No, there we go. The Damascian standard coming down to claim that one. But at what cost? What's happening in the meantime? Yes, Swiper gonna 1v1 Porky. The Ted rest Porky of Chiefs are not, not when the rest of the Chiefs are coming towards it now. Spooks. Oh, the are there. The flayback is good. I don't really know if they have much of a follow-up in terms of damage here. Radio has not made it to the party quite yet. Oh, there he is. As I say it, he's using Yomi's Ghost Blade as well. And a rat a tat tat and Just enough damage. Well, in fact, easily enough damage really to push Spooks on towards might that be in trouble here. No, Yuzora deciding not to go in. Maybe taking his foot off the pedal for that. Just a little bit. But again, another win for the team fight for Chiefs and at a really optimum time. Again, they're so good at these dragons, honestly. Every time there's a dragon up, they always manage to somehow get a pick or some sort of advantage before it, which allows them to have a pretty much easier time. Of course, in this case, AV a little bit healthier because they've had time to recall or, or die in this case and come back. Radio thinking about whether he wanted to go in on that or not. Spooks I don't and Swiper think are both it. extremely low. And I think they'll concede this dragon here to Avant Garden and just give themselves a chance to come back with plenty of items and uh, more, cru more crucially, probably, plenty of health. Yeah. So... I mean, that's a small win, I guess, for AV, but definitely not enough. They are 7k gold behind, and uh, they really need to get a little bit more into this game. Radia coming into the mid lane. Kensti in trouble. Oh, wind ball coming down, but I uh, don't really know if it'll be enough. He does want to go towards Swift here. Swift has enough damage of his own, though. Radia with the Contaminate will pick that one up. 21 kills to 6. More kills in this game than minutes, and <laughs> you know that's really a result yeah. of uh, the aggression that both of these teams are bringing to the table. Super again. On the wall, see these guys. They they are definitely covering their tracks here. Yeah, uh, and, they're, and they're wanting to try and maintain visual control. There's five sweepers on the side of Chiefs, mm. and typically you see one kind of uh, scrying wall. Scrying orb, yeah. Um, but I guess they're just that safe, and that th that they don't really need it. They don't fear face checking because they know they're going to win the fight anyway. And having said that. They don't even really need to face check because they have so much ward control and control over AV's jungle anyway. They've got anyway, six that it wards matter. in AV's jungle. So yeah. that's, that's honestly it's more than enough for now. Uh, they're probably not concerned about any sort of shenanigans being pulled by Avant Garde as well because Avant Garde kind of have to resign themselves to just try and take uh, the Chiefs head on. Yeah, they can try and be a bit sneaky, but Chiefs have so much information here. Avant Garde don't Swiffer. really have any way to do that. There's Aura trying to get away. Swift can use Paper Twix. He doesn't manage to avoid the knockoff from Steel Tempest here, but they're not going to chase onto that one any further. Again, more wards being cleared. You can see the value that the Chiefs are putting on these pink wards and clearing them out. Very, very important to them. Not just the gold, but of course also the positional advantage they provide. So Chiefs now kind of pushing this mid lane. Has been a little bit quiet for the last few minutes, so... Something in the works brewing. Of course, Swiffer has to go down into that ball and clean up that massive wave that's coming to towards the Chiefs' base. Obviously, if that's left unchecked, it's going to probably get a tower on its own. So after this, you'd expect to see Swiffer rotating all towards the mid lane and uh, some sort of fight going to happen. Wow. AV are aware that Swiffer is down that bot lane. That was what that ping was. They wanted to get a fight going, but unfortunately just didn't have the tools to get in range. No Talisman of Ascension available for them. And Porky caught out a little bit here. But how far behind can you fall before that one mistake turns into you have just lost the game hard? Yeah, it's uh, a fine line, and I think it may have already been crossed, to be honest. You know, it's, it's a tough position to be in. League of Legends is, is, is in this position. can be very, very tricky to, to win while you're behind, especially against a team uh, like Chiefs, who always make such calculated movements around the map. And yeah. Again, straight away, the sweeper being used there. They're making sure they have vision. Baiting. Look at this. This is this absolutely one. perfect. Oh, Rady actually coming out. He might even... Throw down a poison cask or something. Oh, yeah, they just want to fight oh. this one. Equalizer coming down. Not really hitting onto a lot of people. And the tidal wave coming up as well. Kensi was in the back line. Now back into his own back line. Yozora jumps on top of Rady. Will be able to take mate. Down. Yes. There we go. Rady does drop. But now, but is there going to be enough damage to follow up? Swiffer no. is pretty big. We saw Swiper there managing to pick up uh, his uh, Veritas there as well. Nardo's super low. Porky as well. We'll get jumped on here. Thanks to the double kill for Rosie. He's a 3 0 10 thresh, actually. Yeah. Pretty big. But uh, after that fight, it's a 4-4-1. Four, four, it trade. should be a free Baron now for Chiefs, assuming they don't die to it themselves, which I, I guess you would really expect. Uh, so that's going to be another boost for them. Have a look at the gold. Fair bit onto uh, Rosie and Swiper, but of course yeah. this Baron going to give us a little bit more gold as well. So they're going to be looking forward to going back and picking up a few items as well. I mean, just snowballing their lead again and again and again. Every little objective is going over to the side of Chiefs, except for that one dragon, which we saw... Uh, so things are not looking good for AV. They do need to somehow turn this around, but I don't even know if it's possible in this situation. 
No. I think uh, there are a lot of unlikely scenarios that need to occur and a lot of big steps that need to be taken by Avantgarde to bring it back. They have a game two, though, and potentially a game three as well. We know like immunity were on the cusp of a similar comeback, yeah. just sort of uh, pipped to the post by Chiefs early on. It's not outside the realm of possibility here. It never is, not in this game from what we've seen. Yeah, definitely. Anything could happen here in this game still. Chiefs could have an absolutely massive throw. Uh, I hope AV would have to get pretty lucky for that to happen, though. Kensty here roaming around the jungle trying to get something happening, but, I mean, Chiefs just so good at walking around together that there's no one ever really on their own. And no move is made by Chiefs without making sure that that bush is scouted out or a ward is placed down. Yeah, they always cover their bases. All right, you can see, oh no, uh, Porky needs to get out of here big time. Spook's going to take a fair bit of tower damage as well, and Porky can deal with a lot of this damage, but Swiffer wants him. He wants him real Whereas bad. He has well. Veritas. Going to be able to get through Swiffer. Might design use this one here. There's a lot of tower damage coming his way. He can play for tricks to back, and well, there's a missed rocket there as well. Don't really know if it would have mattered that we actually no, saw Yozora so. drop down in the periphery as well. So, Swiffer none. And again, the push is on. Veritas and Nada valiantly trying to hold Kensi off on the side as well. A good fight uh, for Avantgarde is probably a little bit too much oh. to ask for at this stage. Veritas is going to get jumped on there. Nice work by Swiffer. Kensi trying to get away. Equalizer coming down on top of him. He's forced back. He wants to go for Swiffer, does he? I'm not really sure. At this stage, it's a triple knockup. And the last breath comes down as well. But Spook's going to nice cut Zonis that. from Swiffer. Heartbreakingly short. And yep, his on his hourglass coming live? out. Yes, he is. All right, so they get that inhibitor down. Chiefs, that's the kind of the objective that they needed to be able to really end this game. And uh, the Baron, of course, paying dividends there. Dragging up in 40 seconds, I don't think they really even care about that, honestly. They're going to be probably recalling and then heading down towards the base of AV and looking to finish this one off. It is a, a significant goal lead at this stage. Uh, and a 1-10-0 one, one, Yasuo is probably a very good way of describing the way that this game has gone for Avantgarde. And I don't really think that... Uh, yeah, you know they really have the capacity. I mean, maybe if Chiefs around them one on one, <laughs> one at a time, and it's got one v five. I reckon Swiffer might even pick up a couple of kills on the way. To be honest, I don't know. So many of these Chiefs games are characterised by Swiffer getting insanely fed. And you know what? To his credit, this game, Spooks didn't have to spend much time at all in that mid lane, if, if at all. Actually, even across the day, I feel like Spooks has more been focusing on the top lane yeah. rather than the mid lane, which is kind of what we expected would happen. But um, Swiper, you know, getting a lot of uh, help from Spooks and it worked really well against JKS. Yeah, yeah but historically as well, like we've often seen Spooks you know, make the movements towards the mid lane, but Swiffer just seems to be on fire today. He doesn't actually need any help. He's having no. a 1v1, even 1v2 in well, some situations. He got three 1v1 kills on Kenzie. What yeah. can you say about that? And you know from there, like especially at this level of play, it's pretty much over. Yeah. So Swiffer now triple buffed. Tri triple buffed. <laughs> triple buffed. Yeah, that's not something yeah. that you want to be seeing when you're AV, no, especially when the Fizz on the other side of the team Swiper has 12 there. kills. Yeah, jumped on by Kensi, but more than happy to turn around and... Oh, God. That's a, that's a very dead Yasuo, unfortunately, now. It's Chiefs now just want to run on towards this one. We see Porky going to get jumped on as well. Aqua Prison is going to knock up Spooks. Porky again, just trying to knock up whoever he can himself. It's a double kick going over towards Radio. Rosie wants a death sentence. Don't think he connected that one, but it's still that outer turret towards Chiefs, and they can continue moving up here as well. Porky is out for 30 seconds. Kensi for 20. Chiefs just going to wait on the wave here. Spooks take a BM tower hit. I'm going to go again. Just a rinse and repeat process here for Chiefs here. You can see Avant-Garde sitting well back of that tower. At what point do they want to turn and actually fight? Is it, can they even, is the question. The Swiper going quite low there as well. Veritas spreading damage nicely. That's inhibitor down. Yozora doesn't Inhibitor want to number two, this. in fact, down for Chiefs. I don't know what that death sentence was aiming for, but uh, Rosie missing a P. Big one there. Wow. Equalizer coming out. That's a long range equalizer. We can see pretty much straight away. Nada gets popped. Yozora now is caught in the middle of it. Kensti jumps in towards the Cataclysm and he's just going to get fried there. Another double for Radia. And now Porky is just going to get jumped on as well. There's not really much more to that say can about be done. Well, that could be said. That could be done really for that matter. Doubles on yours as well on Chiefs is really, really important. They are going to be moving Damn, on to teleport. this Nexus. And take away game one. Maybe a little bit anticlimactic uh, yeah, as to what we bit. expected. I would have expected AV to put up a little bit more of a fight here, to be honest. But, of course, there is game two. Mm -hmm. So, uh, might be seeing something particularly interesting coming out there. Who knows? Well, I think, as I said, with Avantgarde, you don't really get that, that, that game that gets drawn out to 50 minutes. Yeah, yeah. You, know, you kind of, you get a game that they just sort of steamroll over their opposition. Or, in this case, it seems, struggle to adapt to a team that can be just as aggressive albeit uh, even more so, yeah. even more, at least more successful in their aggressive play. Oh. So <laughs> we are going to go to a break and be back with our game two of this grand final very, very soon. Of course, it is Avant-Garde going up against the Chiefs. Chiefs one game away from CGPL victory yet again. We'll be back very, very soon.
ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Australian Technology Park here in Sydney. My name is Uber, joined here by Elfie Sky, and we are into game two of our grand final, of course. If you just joined us, this is the Logitech CGPL Season 2 Championships. Very much so towards the point of year of things now. Yeah. The Chiefs were dominant in game one. This didn't look like a grand final at all. It almost looked like a grand final was played between Chiefs and Immunity. Nonetheless, yeah. Avant-Garde have a chance to bring it back now and definitely put a fight on the board. But let's see if they can deal with the possibility of being behind or prevent themselves from getting in that position. Yeah, it did look like Kensti tilted pretty hard after he lost a couple of kills up in that mid lane against Swiffer. So hopefully he can turn that around. Uh, I dare say he probably won't be playing Fizz again, actually banned away. So definitely won't be playing Fizz again at the very least. No, I don't think so. That one <laughs> being banned away, it seems like we're adding a new champion to the list every game. And it's like we're forgetting the original champions we banned and they are probably going to start fielding through again as well. Rosie might be wanting a fresh straight away here. Unlike him really to prioritize the, uh, well, from what we've seen today at least, to go that support first. But uh, he's been picked up. And that's really just because of how proficient Nada is as a fresh player. Yeah, and, and he well, missed a heck of a lot of Aqua Prisons that last game. That was yeah. not his best game and really, really let him and Veritas down in that lane. Very uncharacteristic of him, of course. Maybe was just a little bit of jitters up against Chiefs. Pretty strong team, you know. Definitely the strongest team here, I guess, at the moment. Uh, but this could change in this game. He's gone for a little bit of a safer pick here so far. Jan, I mean, I mean it's a bit difficult to uh, miss whirlwinds compared to bubbles. Yeah, it's always a, it, it is possible, though. It's definitely possible. Let's see if Nana can prove us wrong. But no, I'm sure... Uh, if he does pick that Janner, it's going to be a little bit of a different paradigm than what he's been applying so far. He still wanted to be so aggressive. <laughs> and that's the problem. Radio, we've seen him all day dodging phosphorus bombs, and that's how he's sort of been winning all these trades in the yeah. bottom, especially when he's playing Lucian. And it's the same. It's even. It's an even smaller he's, template yeah. for Racker Prison, man. And he's just sidestepping that one. And the second that Nato had missed that one, he's like, oh, darn. I don't really have anything left in my kit now. I kind of have a heal, and like I'm just going to run away yeah. and get chunked down. So... You know, Nami, it's, 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 a, it's a slim margin for error if you want to be aggressive with it. If you want to play passive with it, that's fine. But then you leave yourself open to letting your opponent do a little bit more than maybe is safe. So, Nada need to think about how he's going to play this. Janna or Peel, of course, as we've spoken about. She's not really an engaged champion. Yeah. Let's see who's locked away here. Of course, uh, it's going to be Porky in the top lane on Maokai as well. It did fairly well. Feeling fairly comfortable. As we know now, Maokai is big. But if he gets dived, he's still going to go down. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, we'll have to see what kind of champions the Chiefs decide to go for. But I guess they would be going for some uh, pretty aggressive junglers, as is the current meta. A lot yeah. of them are available. Actually, Kha'Zix and Lee Sin are gone. At least gone. Jarvan is the really the only one available. So I'm lying through my teeth. <laughs> we can attribute, uh, you know, Chiefs loss in game two against immunity to not only to immunity playing well of course but chiefs getting a little bit slack on some counts and maybe just sort of some of their builds were a bit questionable as you know we've sort of already said so maybe they maybe they just want to keep it tight here maybe they don't want to get you know complacent going into that second game it's really the last thing they want to do mm. in fact chiefs downfall always has been actually giving those games away it's actually why they yeah. lost uh, the last of oceanic finals they just sort of got complacent let a game slip and all of a sudden uh, it's the so. slippery slope. Yeah, they don't really want it to get to game three. To be honest, like same as you don't want to get to game five. You don't want to take the risk because if your opponents all of a sudden just fire up and go beast mode, then you've left yourself without a contingency. Yeah. And you're like, okay, well, we actually just lost this just because of this one game that we made or this one, you know, game that we didn't approach with a serious enough mindset. Yeah. And Veritas hovering over Graze, looking for that ag aggression down in the bot lane. We have seen him play it once, I believe, up against a Corky in the latter stages of the CGPL. And uh, Janna going to go pretty well with that. Going to amplify his damage quite a bit on that buckshot. And, uh, don't know how easily Swiffer and Swiper will be able to... Oh, no, what am I talking about? How easy Radia and Rosie will be able to go off against that. I'm looking at the champions. But uh, it'll be Radia and Rosie in the bot lane, obviously, for Chiefs. Oh, there you go. Just thought you ought to know. <laughs> no, of course. So uh, it's going to be Radia on that Lucian again. And Rosie on the Thresh. Already, it looks like we're going for the Rumble again in that top lane. And I think uh, Raid, uh, sorry, uh, Swiper, fairly happy with the way he went. Yeah, it was the same That's matchup last game. So I think both of them were particularly all right. I have a look, I have the same issue with Vi as I have with Jarvan. Okay, is that it is all in, all in. Yeah. You don't have a con you don't have any flexibility. If you make a mistake or if you go in on a fight that is not wise, you can't get out. You need to be hundred percent committed, and your team needs to hundred percent follow up with you as well. And when you're behind. All-in engaged junglers are bad. They yeah, are but <laughs> realistically, what 
other junglers are available at the moment. I mean, Kha'Zix, Lee Sin, and Elise are all banned. There's Jarvan, which is all in, and didn't work out very well for AV in the last game. Vi, I guess, the option for them here. And Nocturne going to be going over to Chiefs. We've seen Spooks play that once, I think, in the latter stages. I'll have a look at my notes and get back to you. But I don't believe it worked out particularly well. Okay, well, have a look at this. It looks like Swipper's gone for his Ari here. And uh, Spooks back to his old Nocturne pick. This is, this is one that he's been playing with a little bit again recently, but this is one that he was really known for. He got himself all over the map where he had to be. This is Swiffer now, able to be a counter ganker and an initiator on, on the, at the drop of a hat, especially, of course, with Paranoia and, and enabling him to close gaps so easily. And uh, as I said, Swiffer got to be on that Ari creating picks. It's never been easier than when Swiffer hits every charm. And actually, that's how, to be fair, uh, they dismantled... Uh, legacy when they played against him yep. in CGPL. Every charm from Swiffer was on point and just kept, just, you know, like isolating those single targets, pulling them out and just dealing with them. There's a lot of peak potential on the side of Chiefs as well. Now, about guard, Kenstie's going to be playing the Syndra here. Mm. One of his kind of common champions that he picks up a fair bit has been banned quite a lot today. And actually, I think this is the first time we have seen Syndra picked up uh, today. Uh, actually, probably the first time we've seen Ari as well, so it's going to be an interesting matchup in the middle lane. I reckon Slither probably got the advantage here. He is one of those top Ari players and definitely known for that champion. Uh, so I would expect some pretty crazy stuff going down in the mid lane. Of course, we saw Swiffer and Kensty fighting a lot in the mid lane last time, and Swiffer got the better of him, mm -hmm. of Kensty, uh, in that game. 3 0, I guess, in lane for Swiffer, and then yep. that snowballed into a massive lead going into the mid game and the late game. So Swiffer here probably pretty confident in his abilities to 1v1 Kensty. And this is a reasonably good matchup for Swiffer as well uh, against Kensty. Kensty has to hit, obviously, land his balls uh, on Swiffer. And Swiffer has the ability to be able to spirit rush away and be quite mobile as a champion. When push comes to shove and that level 6 comes up, uh, you know, Swiffer can dodge a lot of the things that Kensty can throw at him. Uh, so we'll have to see if uh, Kensty can make them stick. That's the only tricky part for Syndra here. Yes, her ult does land, but you really want to sort of build up to that by uh, you know, hitting your W and hitting your E as well. It's going to make it a lot easier to get that damage to stick. And Swiffer is hard to kill. Yeah. Uh, and it's going to be hard to kill on Ari. Ari can always just get out if she wants to. If she wants to Spirit Rush away, she can just do that. Definitely. So pretty safe kind of comp coming out from the Chiefs. I mean, they do have a fairly heavy dive, I guess. Nocturne going to get in there. But uh, if, any of the, if any of these Chiefs lanes get particularly ahead, it's going to be a difficult game for AV, as you say. Again, same thing's going to happen as last game. They're going to have all in, but there's not going to be much disengage. I guess there's Janna, but the rest of the team, I mean, she's probably going to be a little bit further behind the rest of the team. Not going to be able to disengage as easily for like a Maokai diving in or a Vi jumping in there. And even like if a Vi ulties onto a Ari and then Spir the Ari Spirit rushes away back into the Chiefs, then that's going to be a disaster for Yuzora as well. It just looks like a massive stacks on composition from Avant Guard, which works if they're ahead or works if they manage to isolate a target well. Yeah, definitely not if they're behind. I like the, uh, the Graves pick up here for Veritas. I don't think it's the first time he's played Graves, actually. Uh, could be wrong here. No, no, no. Yeah, no. He does, has definitely played it in the ladder. Okay. Um, so we know our Graves are benefiting from sort of uh, Yomi's ghost played in the way that uh, you know, he sort of builds out the Brutalizer. The armor penetration is really, really impactful on his buckshot here. Uh, enables him to actually get a lot better uh, trades in that lane. So it'll be interesting to see how the Lucian Graves matchup does go. And Graves getting armor from being in combat and also a bit of shield from Nada surely going to be helping it with, with his trades but isn't it, it's not really enough to outburst Radius surely well we'll have to see I guess uh, Rosie of course going to be very important in this matchup if he can hit those death sentences then this lane definitely going to go in favour of Chiefs but I reckon you know if they can avoid those death, death sentences uh, Veritas probably has the favour of the straight up burst but if it goes straight after about maybe Five seconds of the fight, it's going to go in the favor of Radio because so it's going to have more sustained damage. So you've got straight up burst, and then you've got burst that's not straight up, like over a period. Does that, will that be sustained damage then? Yeah. Okay. That's what I said. <laughs> Mitch, please. <laughs> Sorry. It's too yeah, late for this. Too late. No, anyway, no, I'm on, I'm on board with you. Exactly. So obviously, um, you know, Lucian, I would definitely be able to chain some of those abilities together with his Light Slinger passage just to make sure that he can continue to put damage yeah. down. So going to be heading into the game very, very briefly. I'm looking forward to see the Spooks on Nocturne. And this is the whole thing, this is the whole pick where I got this notion of Spooks just being everywhere um, all, the time. all the time. It's from yeah. this Nocturne. I remember watching him back in the Go For Lols. In fact, it was the Go For Lols that were qualifiers for the last Riot Regionals, I think. One of the Go For Lols was for that. So we've gone back a fair bit now. Yeah, that's a year. long time um, ago. But even then... Uh, 
Spooks was just everywhere on Nocturne. Like, he, he, he could start a gank if he wanted to, but he's always able to respond. Everyone were, was afraid to start a fight in the lane on the other team because they know, like, out of nowhere would be Spooks on Nocturne just turning it right around. Mm. All right, so we'll see if he can kind of continue that form into this game. Obviously, he was pretty impactful in the last game as well. Uh, although, I guess the MVP would have gone over to Swiffer for that one. Mm -hmm. He's been he's been huge all day, to be honest. Uh, like, Swiffer has... Uh, we, we mentioned maybe that, like, uh, there's always the joke that sort of Spooks is... It's like a two-man mid lane. Spooks is always around there. But he just hasn't had to be today. Swiffer has just been... Don't get me wrong. Swift has always been the kind of mid laner that can 1v1 quite happily. But yeah. even more so today, he's been super confident, especially against teams that may be having the jitters about stepping on stage and all that kind of thing. Uh, he has just really, really bucked that trend and been super, super strong. We're out under the rift. Game two, ladies and gentlemen. Chiefs, this is their chance to take out the CGPL Season 2 Championship and Avan's chance or their last chance to stay in it. These single elimination tournaments are nasty. Like, you just don't yeah. have second chances. You've got to be on form. And, you know, that's maybe why Avant Garth spent a lot of yesterday preparing at the Land Cafe and just yeah. making sure that they were, you know, sort of over you know, having flown and travelled and, you know, trying to get everyone together. They, they've got to be ready to play, but they are going to have to bring out something special here to get the better of Chiefs. Yeah, it is obviously a difficult format to play as a player because, you know, you really don't have any second chances and uh, obviously maybe not the optimal format, but given the time constraints, it's pretty much all that you can do in this kind of situation. But, I mean, if AV lose this game, they're going to be losing out on $2,700. Uh, which is kind of a big deal. Absolutely. Especially when you're playing for the money. As a pro player, that's a huge difference here. Veritas now is going to get run into by Radio. Gets a fair bit of burst onto him. Radio can trade back, though. That's Lucian for you, in a nutshell. And only uh, narrowly losing that trade there, despite Veritas getting an extra auto attack and buckshot off towards him. No follow-up there, really, from either team. And I think that was about as deep as Avant-Garde really wished to go at this stage. I see Kensi there, but Kensi really all he can do is summon a ball and just look at it. As it shines on the ground. Minions. Can you stop saying balls, bitch? <laughs> Why are you snickering at that? Wh how old are you again? You give me the funniest look when you say uh, that. I do not. And then it makes me laugh. Okay. Well, I'll try not to uh, try not to look at you. Stop looking at me. Okay. It's creepy. All right. Well, I might get a divider organized between me and Elvish, but in the meantime here, Chiefs are not looking for anything either. They definitely just uh, sort of sitting back. Pings, though, over towards the dragon and... Over towards Rosie there, so I think both uh, both teams just going for Santa Lane assignments here, some standard starts, and Avant Garde really not looking to throw caution to the wind so much this game. They did last game with such aggression, walking into the jungle of Chiefs, even when they were already behind. More than happy to yeah. do that. Now, surely there's got to be a change in uh, in thinking, a paradigm shift, if you will. Pork and Swipe have been there before, very comfortable with that matchup, or used to it at the very least. I want to see how this bot lane shapes up. I want to see how, uh, how Veritas can perform on Graves with Nada. Yeah, they're going to hit level 2 second at the way this bot lane is going. Rosie and Radio are doing a good job pushing that lane up. But Veritas has cleared most of those creeps, so it should be pretty even at the moment. But I guess, again, if Rosie is the first to hit level 2, there is going to be some crazy action down in that bot lane, you would hope. I do hope. I do hope for more action. The Death Sentence going out towards Veritas and Rosie hitting the level 2 first. Normally on the uh, the shoes, normally on the other foot if you're an avant-garde fan. But Radiator coming forward Ooh, now is the level 2. Mm -hmm. Damage is, uh, wow. No, Quite nothing. significant. I think a Veritas auto attack. Radio got like three auto attacks plus a Q. So you can see there the deficit that's being suffered by Veritas as, as a result of that. Porky just getting shoved in Swiper, probably feeling a little bit more confident this game as well. No, at no stage was he really unable to 1v1 Porky last game. Just always, always confident, even now, even more so now. See how Porky tries to, uh, I don't know, shake the monkey off his back. Kind of sucks having played a matchup you already lost and having to do it again. Yeah. The same champions. Must be frustrating. It does give you the chance at retribution, though. I, mean, I guess sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it's not Revenge. even a mistake. It's not even a mistake that you know Porky made. But if we go Swiper actually checking the bush and does actually get an Electro Harpoon on towards Yozora. Yeah. He did know Yozora was there. Oh, there's a ward. There's there. a ward. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, now Rosie, speaking of wards, he's going to act as a mobile one. There is actually a ward up near the dragon here. So Spooks is just roaming around here. Let's see if he wants to make any of those sort of. Uh, mythical pre-six nocturne ganks here if he's just trying to uh, do a bit of counter jungling maybe even. Swiper and Porky definitely aren't going to be shifting from that lane anytime soon. Swiper trying to avoid the sapling there and the wave is definitely in favour of Porky. He'll lose that trade mildly. Yeah, but Porky doesn't have any mana so it's going to be forced to recall here. Nice job though because he did push the wave up before he had to go back. So he's not going to lose too much off this recall. Of course he did have teleport as well if he really needed it to go back to top lane. So... Just going to be able to pick up a door and swing, and that's about it. So not a lot of gold coming out for either of these top laners at the moment. 
Here go Veritas. Buckshot out towards Rosie. Getting pretty hard, actually. The closer Graves is to his target, the more of uh, the Buckshot he can actually get onto, the more effective it generally is. But we don't want to get too close to Raid here at this stage, who, again, as always, is just super comfortable in this position. He played Lucian pretty much to death since he sort of came out, and you can see he really makes it his own. Comes to life, and he's uh, playing it. Veritas now, if you're looking to make some plays, uh, you know, with Graves' burst damage, especially his collateral damage becomes an option post level 6. Being very, very tentative about coming forward. He wants his cannon creep, and looks like Radier isn't going to make him pay for that one. Yeah, Rosie and Radier again controlling this bot lane. You can see Veritas and uh, Nada not really in their element at the moment, you would expect. Uh, nope. They should be kind of more aggressive, but they just seem to be sitting back a little bit, trying to get the CS where they can, which is not their style of play, and Radier absolutely taking advantage yeah. of it. Death sentence hits onto his Veritas as well. Will there be a follow up? Yes, the Flay. Just a slight one there. Radier not really in a position to capitalize on that at all. Nada wants to come forward yet again. Zephyr out towards Radier, trying to do what he can to even the trade up in favor of Avant Garde, but so far, so good for immunity. Pretty much on every front here. Porky just getting shoved constantly. Radier getting knocked up, going to be able to back away. The uh, Dark Patch is thrown out just in case Radier needed it. And Rosie just holding the forward on that right hand side of the lane. And Veritas and Nada trying to combine whatever way they can. Really, just trying to uh, whatever permutation of numbers in terms of damage they can put on towards Radio and Rosie. They're just trying to uh, just trying to make it stick at this stage, despite lack of sustain there. The Thresh Lucian lane, Radio Rose looking very very healthy now. Swiper started on by Porky there. A lot of damage coming out from that Malkai. Yeah, the news of the mid lane is Kensty has a little bit of a CS advantage, which is definitely a step up from last game, which at this stage he was probably a few kills down, but an aggressive from Swiffer. Easily done. Charm hits. That was all really sweet for Nina. He followed up with the Igniter. Had pretty much just enough damage to finish that one off. Can you see? You know, he's, in, he's up in CS. He can be a lane bully as Syndra against Ari, but if he eats that charm, he is going he is to dead. die 100%. Yeah. Can see was level 6 as well, so there was the potential for a, a fight there, but I guess once you hit the charm, it's all over Red Rover when you are up against uh, an Ari, especially Swiffer, who is so competent on that champion. And of course, Swiffer now, even in CS again, so things are not going well for Kensi in that middle lane again. There we go, Veritas going quite low. Radig wanting to go towards him. Exhaust going down on towards Radig, though. Going to force him back. Nada caught amongst that one. And uh, not actually taking a lot of damage at all, but definitely a favorable trade yet again coming up for the guys from Chiefs here. And we can see that Radig just... Mm. Loving life right now. 10 CS up and kind of constantly pushing on you. And as, as you said, this is not avant garde element. This is this is not their comfort zone at all. No. They like being able to come forward. They don't like being forced back. And I think uh, it takes a little bit more to force them back than it would for most teams. And they let they may be a little bit more reckless. They take a little bit more damage than they need to because they're not comfortable. They're not comfortable playing like this. And to be honest, we haven't seen any uh, sort of action coming out from either of these junglers yet. Obviously, Spooks trying to rush to level 6 so he can get that ulti out on Nocturne. Gives him a lot of extra ganking power. Yuzora, though, I would have expected to see a little bit more action from. Uh, doesn't have the most terrible uh, 1 to 5 ganks. Mm. But uh, I guess also going for that fast level 6. A little bit behind Spooks in that respect. About 8 CS down, which is, of course, enough to be only at one level down. I don't know if that's smart. I don't know if that's smart at all. Like, yeah. you, you do. Like, you, you need to make the most of the pre-6 time when Nocturne isn't really able to make a gank stick and kind of has to resort to sort of counter ganking and potentially wasting time getting to lanes to do that. I really would have liked to have seen Yozora be more aggressive early on, but something's made him so careful. Yeah. Or at least he's, he's just... He, I think he's overvaluing having a salt and battery in his arsenal because... Then, Paranoia is going to be there for Spooks as well. Yeah. It's not like there's going to be any distinct advantage that he brings, uh, you know, just being just being ganking there. No. And, uh, it's so much opportunity for Spooks to counter gank and turn it around. Yeah, and Vi, I mean, I guess... I reckon even Spooks probably going to outscale Vi in this late game. Depending on what kind of item build he goes for, if he goes tanky, damagey, probably going to go a little bit off tank, bruiser tank, you know, sort of damagey, but no Feral Flare for him, which is what we saw... Uh, who was it that played it last... I don't remember, but they picked up a Feral Flare and it just didn't get to the point in the late game where the Feral Flare was even relevant. So uh, Spirit of the Elder Lizard probably going to be the pickup for both of these junglers. I don't know if, uh, yeah, the Feral Flare, just, it really requires you to uh, spend so much time in your jungle. I don't know if it's really worth it, especially if you're only getting like 20, 22 minutes into the game. Like, Yeah, I mean, Riggles is nice, but there is some other stats you're probably favouring a little bit more, especially if you're trying to get early ganks to stick and to see. So, yeah, Swift has done very well played carefully in this lane. Like, Syndra's not easy. It's quite easy to get poked down by her because she can, she's got so much uh, ability to harass you behind your creep wave here. And he's, he might be behind in CS, but he's definitely not losing the lane. Porky not getting a very good trade there at all. 
No, nope, forced to back away. And that's what happens when you have a danger zone flame spitter as well. You actually just can't stand it. You need to back away. Yeah. Too much damage. You can't out-trade that. And Rumble isn't stupidly high damage in a normal case, but you can see Swipe is keeping himself in that yellow just to try and make sure he's getting plenty of damage across. And Rosie doing a little bit of warding work here. The pink ward going to be going down pretty quickly. And... Uh Nice pink ward coming out from Rosie around the dragon area. Of course, that was taken away by Chiefs just before. And Swiper now doing his work in the top lane, having forced Porky away. Bit of a gank-ish coming down in that bot lane, but not going to be too crazy. Rosie coming in here aggressively. Mm. I don't think they want a 3v2 here, to be honest. Of course, Spooks is coming down, does have ultimate available. Uh, yeah, Spooks is probably not going to come down either. I think uh, Chiefs knew as soon as their wave blew through, they'd have the ability to just sort of push them back off their tower and... Uh, they, they have the way clear, it's fine. Not really much to worry about there for them. No towers actually going down though, as you do say that. So Gizora may be thinking he wanted to put some free damage down at the very least, but he has really not been active early on in this game. We don't expect Spooks to be, mind you, but Gizora, I mean, kind Zora, of got to be. Yeah, he's been traditionally a pretty active jungler in the early game. Not Aggressive. Um, and something has just changed. That maybe Chiefs have kind of broken him. Um, I mean, that game previous to this one was not very good for anyone on the side of AV but uh, maybe it, it runs a little bit deeper than just that one game Kenshi is giving Swift so much breathing room in the mid lane too yeah. much respect maybe yeah no, yeah, absolutely like last time he went aggressive okay like he, he died but like if you're Ari like you have safety but you can't you can't just let them farm it's, it's the worst thing you could possibly do especially if you're Sintra post 6 you have a lot of capacity to to do damage, to harass, to actually, you know, to go 1v1. But Kenshi just doesn't seem to want to do that at all. Really, I wonder what his mental state's like at the moment. Mm, well, it'll be interesting to know, but probably not something we are going to be able to find out, seeing as we are not uh, able to get the comms from these teams. But Spook sitting here in the bush in the bot lane, looking for a gank. Rosie was going pretty aggressive down there before, but it's really going to be on Rosie to hit a hook. Oh, well, you sort of want to go in. Yeah, assault and battery towards Swiffer. Swiffer already uh, gets away a little bit there with one use of Spirit Rush. The flash back the over flash. the wall from Yozora. Oh, well, Swiper, I guess, was on the scene there. Oh, oh the flash away from the Equalizer. Kenshi's going to get away, but not by much. Oh, oh. Spooks comes straight over the Paranoia. He's going to take a tower hit there. He's going to have to get some help in a moment. Yep, Rosie, there he is. He's going to manage to get the Dark Passage out there as well. Swiffer now doing some damage towards Porky. Double kill coming up here for Spooks in a situation, really, that's not safe in the slightest. I don't even know really if he should have picked up either of those, but the Chiefs were there to pick him up, I think. Uh, and it was good communication from them as well. A very deep extension. That is how you play an all-in jungler, by yeah. the way. That's how you do it. You, uh, don't, you don't ult them and then flash away straight away. Yeah. That was uh, pretty much Spooks getting to the point where he had that uh, ultimate available, had the right opportunity to use it, and just taking advantage of that. There's Teleport coming in here from, Cor uh, from Porky. Uh, a little bit risky Ooh. getting hit by a charm. Yeah, that's right, and it makes it harder for him to... Whoa! Whoa. Wow, interesting monsoon there. Really knocks the Chiefs that. around, but uh, I don't really know what the end result was supposed to be from that one. Kind of just result of Nada getting himself killed, and now Porky wants to come forward again. Yozora is there, doesn't have the ult available. And you see that uh, Kenshi managed to pick up the kill there as well. Wow, a lot of damage coming out for collateral damage. Veritas coming forward again. The double, can he make it the triple? He wants to go for a little bit more. Can he oh. bite off? No, he didn't bite off more than he can chew. He's going to come forward again. Won't be a quadra, but it will be a straight ace from Avant-Garde. Kind of a false start there yeah. with the Monsoon. Didn't really work out. The collateral damage, all he had was a BF sword and he's in his inventory, but that came skittering across the heads of the Chiefs. So much damage taken off. Yeah, that was a nice turnaround for AV. Now they are back to relatively even. Chiefs, of course, still have the gold advantage, but this tower going to turn it around. And uh, now AV in the lead for the first time, I believe, in this game and also in the last game as well. So... Uh, Bit of a turnaround. They're going to be happy with that. Dragon going to be up in a minute and a half. Three kills went over to Veritas. So he is going to go back. He's picked up that Infinity Edge. And uh, that's going to be kind of a big power spike for him at this Dragon. Radia still has not hit that Infinity Edge. Uh, so if there is a time to fight for AV, it would be now. Mm, Swiper not quite able to clip Kensty with that one. Pulled him back from recalling. As the smoke clears, as you said, gold. Very, very close to being even here. Two towers apiece. The question is now, what do Avant-Garde do with this? It's not a distinct enough leaf and no. just waltz into the enemy jungle and, and do whatever they like. And even a dragon fight that is a straight-up 5v5 is probably going to go in the way of Chiefs because they have got Swiper. And especially if they can get Swiper to level 11 before that dragon fight takes place, he's going to have a level 2 ulti. And uh, it's going to be pretty crazy. We know the Equalizer, one of the strongest AoE abilities around those objectives like Baron and Dragon. So it's going to make things difficult for AV, but they're just responding beautifully to this. 
And uh, taking out that mid lane. Don't know if they'll quite get it. Super coming in here to the side. Oh, good catch on towards Swiffer there. Wow, oh, the collateral damage as well. Look at what's being thrown at that Swiffer. He's actually going to pull away, and that's a good disengage. We do see now the Equalizer coming down. Swiper, be careful not to bite off more than he can chew here, but they did manage to stop the take of this turret. Long range stun on towards Rosie now. Veritas should be able to clean up the tower, but who's behind him? Spoof going straight towards Veritas. Will he get the chain down? The no. unspeakable horror doesn't proc. He gets popped far too early. Nada now caught amongst it. I don't even really know if they want to be focusing the support right now, but Veritas is still in a good position to do damage. Smoke screen comes down right on top of Swiper's head. A stun doesn't quite hit on towards Rady. That's crucial. Kenstein needed that one to hit. Swiffer will drop down. No. Oh, Veritas manages to pick up Swiffer. With the buckshot there as well, Avant-Garde yet again coming forward. It was a three-for-one fight. One again that looked like it should have been a Chiefs fight, but Avant-Garde may be starting to find their feet, slowly but surely. Yeah, and this is kind of the, the situation in which they thrive in, where they're a little bit ahead, they can go aggressive, do these crazy kind of things, and uh, make plays. Of course, Veritas sitting pretty happy with four kills, and now they're going to get that Dragon as well. Going to increase their gold lead even more. So AV turning this around beautifully. We thought they were tilting a little bit, uh, after that first game, but they've turned it around and Chiefs now on the back foot, but we do know Chiefs very experienced side uh, Probably gonna be able to turn this one around if they are given the chance uh, We've got to accept that avant-garde are never gonna win a game by dragging it out to the late game and just having some miracle fight That's just not how they play. Yeah, they're gonna want to try and really clean up here 15 minutes into the game and a lot of action here We've already seen three turrets a piece down. That's all um, Excuse me that's, yeah, three times. So not all the outers, I was going to say that, but we actually have mid has been pushed in quite deeply by both sides. And that's where a lot of these fights are happening. You know, we're getting to the point now where it's almost acceptable for Yozora to, to extend a long way forward and to try and put an assault and battery down. Uh, yeah. You know, which is something that, as we said, it's a, it's a big extension. But when you can follow up with something like collateral damage, we can unleash power as well from Syndra, uh, you have a lot of damage that you can throw. And, you know, an overextension is generally justified if you can dispatch your target quickly enough to get yourself out without being responsible. The only danger, again, is if he does use that onto Ari and Ari Spirit rushes backwards mm. all the way too far away for AV to um, kind of help him, and that could be an issue. But Well, target selection is important. I reckon, yeah, he's probably not going to do that. He's probably going to be looking for something like Radia or maybe even Swiper. If he can get onto Swiper before that uh, Zonyas comes out, he's definitely a target that can be bursted pretty quick, especially when you have Graves on your team. So... Definitely a lot of options available for AV at the moment. They've decided they want to go for that top tower, and uh, things are just starting to heat up in this game. That's it. avant got with a good rotation there as well. No real opportunity for Chiefs to hold on to that one. We'll put them in the lead in towers at least. Whoa, good little stun nice coming up equalizer. onto another. Good charm. Equalizer going down. It looked like the right stun in the bot lane. from Kensty pushed them away from that one. They just sort of, sort of seemed to sit still, and Spooks didn't actually follow up at all on the paranoia there, so didn't actually manage to pick off Nada at all. AV need to do something here. They need to either fight or back because Radia is pushing that turret and actually we see Porky teleporting there down to the bot lane and uh, that's going to relieve a little bit of pressure on AV but also relieving the pressure on uh, Chiefs. So things, you know, still pretty even at the moment despite this small lead for AV. Okay, pings towards mid lane and that's where Veritas currently is residing looking towards working on his uh, Yomi's Ghost Blade. Pretty soon, presumably, anyway. To see if that is actually the plan. Bit of clearing being done in terms of wards here. Not really sure what happened there with Chiefs. They sort of just sort of chilled in that bush, and I, I think they got knocked back by uh, by the Kensty stun. And that was a good disengage. Nada yeah. looked like he was going to get popped, but yeah. just managed to hang on there. And that was a fair bit burnt by the Chiefs to try and make the fight. There, no, as I said, they're uh, they're game twos, man. The game twos always always wonder whether it's them or it's their opponents getting a better feel for them. I don't know. Yeah, turrets across the board even as well, so 4-4. Four to four. Um, And AV again, just slightly in the lead, looking for something. Uh, Kensty and Porky going to be sitting up there in the base. Everyone kind of congregating now in the mid lane. Not sure exactly what the Dragon Timer is, but it's still a little while away, so that's not an option for the moment. And I don't think really either of these teams are too keen to fight over nothing. Well, I don't know. Avocado actually, they'll fight over a pink ward. I've seen that happen before. I've seen the whole team fight over Pink Ward, so yes. they will fight. Chiefs maybe will fight if they think they'll win. I don't think they'll ever go into anything. Oh, unsaid. they're going to win this. Yozo, well, it's kind of hard to lose that. Rudy Ozora tries to go on towards Swiper anyway. Collateral damage coming through, hitting no one really in particular. Kensty caught in a bad spot. Porky having to twist advance away to a minion to get out there. And Chiefs be happy with that one pick up there. There's no smite available for uh, Avant Guard at this point. Not really that there's anything to use it on, but still they can secure this blue buff with relative safety. And yeah, that's all you got to do. Chill in your jungle, get the pick, move on. Yeah, there's not much Yuzora could do about that one. 
Obviously, he got picked up. I don't know the use of the Sotom Banner was really wise there. Yeah, I mean, it's not a majorly long cooldown. Uh, but should a fight happen in the next 45 seconds or so, yeah, it's going to be down. Which is kind of a big deal, but uh, I don't expect a fight going to happen that soon. Dragon going to be up in a minute 50. That's probably going to be when the next fight kind of takes place. Yuzora's ultimate will definitely be up by then. So things are kind of uh, not terrible for AV after that little pick. Okay. Well, let's wait and see how these teams want to consolidate after that. A little bit of a misstep there by Avant Garber. It's not enough to put them behind yet. Still, no, fairly even gold. But Chiefs are still keeping themselves in this one as well. And I just feel like late game Chiefs, they just make some really clever decisions. on The way that they took the game essentially away from immunity, mm. uh, you know, in game three of their series as well. Just an indication of how they managed to really keep their heads late in the game. And immunity just threw so much. And it's such a shame. They're such a strong team. Um, with paranoia being used there, where are we going Nowhere by the looks of things there. It was a charm that was missed on towards Veritas. So no follow-up there yet. Everyone's going to try and hold on to their ultimates and other abilities until that dragon becomes an issue. It's about a minute away yet. So I really think... Uh, I just want to be careful not to get caught here. No one should be getting caught. No, that would be, be terrible. Together. Yeah, it's just auto-dragon giveaway. They want to be able to actually contest it and s test their metal essentially, see if they can fight and see what they can derive from a victorious fight as well. Veritas just avoiding the charm coming his way, Kara Swiffer. And now Vanguard again, just trying to clear wards. Back and forth they go. And there's a sweeper going down to take that one out. Porky, Kensti, Veritas. Three big plays here for Avangard. Three very impactful plays as well over the course of the day. They're all looking to make things happen here. Well, Kensti definitely having a better game than he did last time. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, it's hard to have a worse game, to be honest. <laughs> I think he went like 110 or something, yeah. which was uh, yep. definitely not the result that he was looking for. But AV sitting here in the bushes, trying Porky to get some sort of pick. Yeah, Porky's on the ward, but the main thing is the rest of them aren't on the ward. So, oh, by well, the charm. Swift has got to hit those. That's his third one, and is uh, probably in as many minutes that he's sort of shanked. And why well, not? He probably really wants to get. It might be a fight here, Zora. Look how he's coming forward. Swipe is going to use the equalizer straight away. Veritas in the backline still able to do a fair bit of damage. Goes down to 60% of his health in the process. Though Swipe gets popped very, very quickly. Monster will be used by Nada. Good charm on to Kensi. Kensi gets picked up by Spooks as he comes forward. He does get exhausted, though. Oh, a no. distance on to Veritas. What a crucial one there as well. Nada trying to get away, but that's a double kill for Radio. Zora going over the wall. Nada surely going to get caught by the orb. And Zora just left to. Uh, to rue his lost chances there as Chiefs clean up that team fight. It's an ace, and all they lost was Swiper in the process. And that was the play's mid team fight that won yeah. it for Chiefs. Okay, the equalizer went down, and standard response step away from the equalizer, right? But what that did is it caused predictable pathing from yeah. avant garde for someone like Rosie to death sentence in Veritas and clean him up. Yeah, the key uh, skill shots were hit by the Chiefs, the yep. Death Sentence and the Charm. The charm course, onto Kensti as well. Swiffer. Both those absolutely massive and both resulting in a free kill for Chiefs. And essentially, when you get two out of five people down, that's going to be the end of the team fight. Swiper did what he had to do. He got the ulti off, even though he did get popped. Um, he was really doing what he had to do, and uh, it allowed Chiefs to kind of clean up. Oh, yeah. And, and to be honest, like, if that's the difference. These teams are even and gold. Chiefs hit their skill shots. They go four for one. Yeah. Or, yeah, four, four for one, five for one. They, they have a you know, five, five for one. one. Yeah, they have a massive fight. So that's just that's all it takes, really. Uh, and he's to nail them ones in. So we're missing a few charms, but that one towards Kensi prevented him actually from even using his ulti. He yeah. died before he could ult at all. No chance for him to make any impact there, which is probably tough if you're Kensi. You're really uh, quite frustrating seeing your team fall around you and not actually being able to do anything about it. But he walked into the skill shot, and Chiefs held their medal as that fight started. Now, will they want another one? Possibly. A swiper coming forward again towards the red. Where do Chiefs go from here? Well, I mean, Baron is an option. I don't think that would be probably the smartest decision to go for. Obviously, Rosie going to do some ward clearing around that area. Just keep that thought in the back of the minds of AV. But uh, yeah, Rosie going to be looking forward to heading to this mid lane now. Porky trying to catch Swiffer out, but getting hit by a charm. That would have been a little bit dangerous for Swiffer if he had have gotten hit there. And Kensti getting the stun. Well, there we go. Swiffer going to try and get away. Gets altered as well. Porky in the back line. But Kensti goes low. Swiper gets knocked away by the Monsoon by Nada. Well played, but Porky now caught amongst it. Kensti got jumped on by Spooks here. And Veritas is just going to get piled on by the rest of Chiefs as well. That's that Nocturne pick mid-team fight. He can pick his target. He has essentially an assault on battery, uh, but from a much larger range, really. And so the team fight starts... Spooks is using that responsively to yep. pick a target out. Kingsley got nuked. Absolutely. And Porky just getting too far away from the rest of his team. Like we said, uh, we thought it might happen with Yazora and Assault and Battery, but actually Twisted Advance, the death sentence there for Porky, taking 
him way too far away from his team and uh, Swiper and the rest of Chiefs going to be picking up that mid lane inhibitor and heading back to base with a bunch of gold in their pockets. Not too crazy amounts, but uh, anything's better than nothing, to be honest. Agreed. Avant-garde now. <laughs> After all that's gone down, like where, where they're trying to pick up the pieces here so, yeah. so quickly. The Things lead just, that they had, the, mm. the game that they had constructed has just fallen to bits and it's just been team fight coordination. I mean, there's, both teams have had five. Both teams have had decent starts to their fights. In fact, in both cases, I think Avant-Garde have made the engagement, but they've just fallen apart. They've gotten split up. They've just made some big errors that have just cost them there. But can they bring it back? That's the question. It's not to say it's not possible for them. Yeah, definitely more of a chance of coming back in this game than in the previous game that we just watched. So, uh, you know, things not all lost yet for AV, but certainly their time is running out if they do want to do something. That can turn this game around, obviously. Veritas still pretty decent here, 5-2-3, but doesn't want to get in a 1v1 with Swiffer. Wow, uh, Swiffer has damage, but oh god, he has just enough damage yeah. there, and that's unfortunate. That's what happens when you try and a 1v1, a burst damage AP carry. I mean, you can, it, you can yeah. open up the account with plenty of damage of your own, but one charm, you're dead. Yeah, if he had have maybe dodged the charm, he would have had a better chance of 1v1-ing Swiffer there, but uh, as soon as that charm hit, it was going to be dead Veritas straight away. And I think it was probably an error on his part to be kind of trying to 1v1 someone like that. Look at this, sitting in here, Chiefs, <laughs> Rosie clearing out those wars. They're trying to kind of bait somebody in here, but no one biting just yet. They will. They will. I think Porky looking to go around somewhere. Here he comes. It's as easy as you like. Rosie coming forward. Wants to land a hook. Ooh. Won't connect. Uh, could still be doing Baron as far as... Have I, no, they can't really just walk away from the pit and leave it unattended because the Chiefs are all just sitting in there. Oh, Swiffer's going to aggro Baron there and start up on that one. Rosie just going to zone away. That's getting chunked down quite quickly, actually. You can see Nada coming forward here. Will he get caught? No charm won't hit. A couple of Fox Fires do. Porky now is going to be in the mix in just a moment. Swiper, he's damaged down. Spooks jump out to whoever he wants. Can see the target. This time Zonny's being used there. Equalizer well placed straight across the front of the team fight. It was uh, Yozora that died first. Can see not far behind as well. Double kill coming out for Swiper. There we go. Spooks finds his target yet again. Veritas still alive at the end of the team fight. Usually a good sign for an AD carry. Not no. when the rest of your team is just yeah. dead. And that is a big fight. A four for one yet again. Chiefs, this huge team fight margin that they're coming out on top with. And yeah, it's not a big gold lead, but it's just the fact that they're pouring down. They can probably finish the game here. Yeah, that honestly. inhibitor is already down. They only have to take down two Nexus turrets. Ten seconds left on Yuzura on that fight. No assault and battery available, so not going to be able to do much. Chiefs do it. They were just going to walk up and take the Nexus, ladies and gentlemen. It looks like the Chiefs Esports Club are going to be your CTPL Season 2 champions walking straight up to the base, taking the objectives they like, and that is the Nexus down. Congratulations to Chiefs. What a yeah. strong series from them as well. I mean... Uh, we saw against the Muni, they were really, really pushed this time. I just feel like they're on another level. Yeah, very, two years very in a sweet. row as well. Yeah. Uh, CGPL victors last year, obviously under the tag of I Am. But this year they've formed their own team. Now they're Chiefs. And uh, taking it away once again. Going to be walking away with $2,700 in their pockets. Obviously not each, but uh, still something to go home with. Absolutely. And what a performance from them as well. We can think about uh, the way I guess they've evolved as a team coming away from immunity and sort of reforming as Exodus first yeah. and then sort of into Chiefs. These guys have definitely placed themselves as one of the absolute favourites to be winning the uh, the Riot Regionals here as well. We look forward yeah. to those ones as well and look forward to what the rest of the games will be bringing for us. And we're going to wrap it up here for ladies and gentlemen, at least for now. We'll uh, be back shortly, I'm sure, with our man Ben, Sandman Green, a bit of an award ceremony as yeah. well. See you soon.